Good afternoon, everyone. Day three. Um, next thing is the lightning talk after this. If you actually have a lightning talk up on the board, please make your way straight over and assemble uh, in the room for track one. Um, but please don't go in if they're still talking. Uh, after this talk. Yeah, yeah, that's because then lightning talk, but a bit of... Yeah, <laughs> leave now. Uh, no. <laughs> but that shows Robert is awake. Uh, if you're not so awake, outside it's really chilly. Um, good, good chance to freshen up. Let me introduce Will. Will works for Catalyst. He's to, um, going to talk about mezzanine. And um, yeah, take it away. Cool. So yeah, um, I'm hi, Will Hughes. I'm a primarily a Python dev uh, for Catalyst. I do a bit of everything though, a bit of Rails when I'm absolutely forced to. But um, Catalyst Christchurch, we've done over the last couple of years, we've uh, built three uh, mezzanine sites for clients. We've got a fourth one on the way once they finally sign off on it. Um, but we also do quite a bit of Drupal. Probably a bit of an understatement, we do an awful lot of Drupal. Um, and part of that's led us to try and work out if there, if there is any alternatives to Drupal or complementary products, which led us to start investigating Mezzanine, which led me here. So in a nutshell, Mezzanine is a toolkit built on top of Django designed for building sites with editable content. It's Calling it a CMS isn't really quite accurate. It's not a system. It is a toolkit. It is a set of APIs, set of tools that's built on top of the Django uh, toolkit that just makes all of that stuff easier. Um, it ships with a reasonably opinionated base template that you can use to get started in the same way that Django itself ships with a reasonably opinionated base template. You're free to just discard that if you don't like it. It's BSD licensed, same as core Django. Um, it supports Django 1.7 and 1.8, so you've got LTS support in there for Django. Um, Python 2.6, 2.7, 3.3 and 3.4, so all of the Python that you love. Uh, it is maintained by a guy called Stephen McDonald, uh, currently working for Google, but does a bunch of other stuff in his free time. I don't know how he has any free time, but yeah. Uh, Mezzanine.jupo.org is the website for that. So if there's, if, if that's it, nothing else, if you go to sleep now, that's the important stuff. Getting started with Mezzanine is really, really, really similar to getting started with Django. If you follow any of the Django tutorials online, you install some dependencies, you make a virtual environment, you install Mezzanine or Django into the, into the virtual environment, and then you use Mezzanine Project to uh, instantiate that opinionated base template. And that is what gets you started. You can, that's, that's a great way to start learning. Um, personally, I find that base template, eh, it's, it's, it's not that great. Um, but if you're just starting out with Mezzanine, this is a really great way to get started. Uh, the libjpeg there is uh, is required for uh, Pillow, which is the Python fork of the Python image library. Uh, so if you want to be able to actually upload JPEGs, you know, not exactly an uncommon format, you need libjpeg. So features, um, you can preview unpublished content. Useful. It's got a really neat inline editing system. I'll show you that later. So if you're logged in as an administrator, you just get these little edit buttons. You hit, you change it, you hit save, and you're done. It has native support for multilingual sites. Um, it gives you complete control of the markup of your site. It uses the Django templating engine, um, Ginger, uh, and gives you a system for completely customizing how the markup on your site is done. Not terribly relevant for me. I'm mainly a back-end dev, but the front-end developers I work with really, really like this because it makes styling things so much easier if you're not working around a markup scheme that's imposed on to, into, you know, by another system. Uh, it enforces a strong separation of the site structure and the site content. Um, quick show of hands, has people worked with Drupal at all here? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Drupal doesn't do this. Um, in Drupal, everything is in your database, basically. You can do a, you can do some stuff with features to, to define your content structure and code, but for the most part, everything exists as objects in your database. Even configuration items are objects in your database. Um, 
I'll come back to that a bit later, but that's a really, really strong, uh, good feature that lets you sort of follow good engineering practices when you're building a mezzanine site. Um, it's got a really, it's really, so it's really nice for developers. It's really nice for content admins as well. If you've got people who are trying to admin the site who are not technically, you know, not sort of really hardcore devs, it's got a nice ed interface they can use. Not as nice as Wagtail, I, I have to admit, I'm sorry, um, but it's pretty nice. Um, out of the box, support for Discuss as an external commenting system or a Kismet if it wants to use it, its own internal commenting system, or you can just throw it all away and build your own. It, it doesn't require that you use its systems and support for Google Analytics, which you don't have to use either. Um, as I said, build on top of Django, all the Django features you love. So part of the reason why I like using Django, don't know about you guys, but Django is part of a bigger ecosystem. There's Core Django, and Core Django's great, but it doesn't do absolutely everything for you. But there are a huge variety of modules that do things that you might find useful. Mezzanine taps into this ecosystem really well, that reusing com components like Django modules that are not explicitly designed to work with Mezzanine is really, really straightforward. So for instance, um, Mezzanine has a built-in search system it's kind of naive, it's not terribly performant. If you've got a tiny little blog site, it's great. It just works, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're building something bigger, if you're building something complicated, it doesn't really work for you very well. For instance, one of the sites we built um, in Christchurch uh, involved a document library for this organization that had something like 10,000 publications in it. You know, 10,000 PDFs that they wanted full text search over be able to categorize and tag and all this. And Mezzanine Core just can't do that. Haystack's really good at this. Haystack is an interface into a bunch of different search backends like Solar, Wush, Elasticsearch, all of this stuff. Provides like an ORM interface into that. Um, so it's really, really straightforward to just add Haystack into Mezzanine or, you know, because, it, because of the, the because of, uh, it makes that li makes life really easy for that. Um, Django Compressor, the base template uh, has support for this. Um, if you're not using Django Compressor on your Django site, please, please use Django Compressor or something like this. Pipeline's great as well. It's a system for asset concatenation and minification. So your style sheets, your JavaScript, all of this, bundling them up into a, a, a single style sheet file, a single JavaScript file, running them through a minifier. You know, I'm on cell data a lot of the time. I don't want to have to download 40 style sheet files at a few K each with a TCP connect round trip for every single one of them. Please, please concatenate. Um, cartridge, uh, also another Stephen McDonald special. It's an e-commerce system built on top of Mezzanine. So you've got the layers of tooling building up there. Um, I haven't really had a chance to play with it. It looks really, really cool. If someone wants to um, pay for some R&D time, um, come talk to me afterwards. Um, so once you've got, you know, if you're getting started on, on a new Django project, new Mezzanine project, um, Mezzanine is just Django. So if you're already doing Django, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, there are a lot of ways of, of deploying and configuring a Django site. Um, being a bit more helpful, the way that I like to do my Django personally, my mezzanine, um, is your site should be at least one, maybe several Python modules. You should build them into wheels. You should stick those wheels in a virtual environment on your UAT staging prod servers. Use something like config parser to load up um, settings out of an INI file or a JSON file, whatever. YAML also works. Um, or, yeah, and then you uh, uh, nginx and unicorn. If if you like Apache, use Apache. I find it a pain, but uh, Mezzanine specifically, I find it really helpful to split the site into two Django apps. One of which is for the site. Um, site content, you know, site structure, sorry, things like um, different page types and all of that. And then another separate module that is just your theme. This way, if people come and say, 
you know that site we built for you? Yeah, it's great. We've changed our branding and we kind of need you to completely redo the visual design of the site. You can build a separate thing and then just swap them over. The demo has an example of how to do this. There's gonna be a demo. Let's have a demo. <laughs> so, um, Acme Widgets. Um, this is something I put together in a few hours, a few days ago. All the code for it, I will post links to at the end. But you've got, yeah. so, th so this, is, this is just a standard page. You've got a menu, you've got a side menu, you've got a bottom menu as well. This is, this is what a default, basic, unconfigured mezzanine site looks like. You'll note if you visit my blog that my blog looks a lot like this because I'm not a visual designer, I'm a back-end engineer. <laughs> um, so I mentioned an admin interface. If you log in on the, if I can type. Yeah, I'm running in debug mode, don't judge me. No, <laughs> I'm not that crazy. So this, this is what the, the admin interface looks like once you, once you get into it. Um, it's, it's Grappelli, right? We've, people have used Grappelli before. It's a, it's a slight fork of Grappelli. There's some problems with core Grappelli that means it doesn't quite play nice with the way that the mezzanine devs want things to work. So they forked it and they do contribute patches back upstream. Oh, it's never this slow. It's always faster than this. Um, so the, the, the core, the sort of the core basic mezzanine, you, you get a page tree, you add pages, you have different types of pages though. What's my, oh come on. This worked perfectly. Why did I do a demo? You have different types of pages. So these pages here, this page here is just a straight rich text page. All you've got is a title, you've got published status, date, and content. TinyMC4, um, which is what I'm talking about, making it nice and easy for people to, to edit. It's, it's a nice busy word, you've got buttons. You can edit the markup if you want directly. And you can tell it what menus you want it to show in and then set some extra metadata if you really want to. Um, but if you don't like this, um, that, that model, you can uh, add new types. So I've defined an, an employee type. This is a you know, fairly common pattern we see with a lot of clients that they want a type of page where you know, you've got, these are, this is our CEO and our directors and this is a little blurb about them, this is what position they've got, and this is a photo. So you can take the default rich text page and subclass it and add new fields and you can add you know, a text field and a photo field uh, yeah. and then it's got a built-in media browser so you can upload media and you can create directories and all, all of this great stuff and you can set permissions on the, f on the photos and uploaded files and all of this. Um, you don't have to use pages though, if you don't want something that's part of the page tree, and I'll talk about this a bit more later, you can just define standard Django models, but instead of subclassing um, model, you can subclass displayable, and, you cr and then you get the, the URL, uh, you, know, you get the metadata, you get the published status and all of that for free. Um, so that's about what I'll, yeah. so if you're logged in, and then you jump back onto the site, you get this little yellow thing here, and you can hit the button, and then you get editing, editing boxes. And then you can just start, you know, you say, oh, there's a spelling mistake there. We'll see, it isn't spelt like that, it's got a capital O. I'm gonna fix that, and then hit save. And that's done. And that's really nice and powerful, and we find that really easy to use for the content admins. So that's the demo. So I talked about two types of, of, um, of content in that, that you have pages and then you have just, just objects. Um, 
So pages are great for when you've got a really small amount of, of, of stuff. You know, you've got 10 or 15 you know, staff members that you want to feature. You've got a few, you know, a few, a couple of different um, types of uh, things that you do. So you've got the, these these pages. They're the things that appear in the menu. You have a you can manually control their position in that menu, which means you have to manually control their position in that menu. So if you've got hundreds of objects, you probably don't want to have to manually sort them into an order. You're probably better off using an object, and I'll talk about that in a bit, so that you know you can let the machine do that, and then you don't have to manually do it. So you implement this by subclassing, as a model, mezzanine pages models page. You don't need to write your own view logic. Mezzanine just deals with that for you. You, for the most part, don't really actually have to write an admin either. It pretty much just deals with that for you. I'll show you that later. You can also just use the rich text page type, which I showed you before. You don't have to define your own types. The basic, basic mezzanine site, you don't even have to get into this at all. So that's what models looks like, right? That's what the model for that employee that I showed you before, right? Is you just, you're just subclassing page. Um, the rich text uh, that I'm subclassing there as well gives you the, the content box with the, uh, with the WYSIWYG. And then you, then you just use um, char field, file field, like you do in, in just plain Django. Um, file field is actually a slightly different type of file field. Mezzanine has its own file field that looks an awful lot like the Django file field, but it, it, so that you get the um, the media box there. You um, that's all you need to do for the admin is you just just tell it that you want to use the page admin. That makes it show up in the page tree. It automatically works out what fields it needs to stuff in where. You can override the ordering of those if you want, but you don't always have to. And then and then you templating. Um, because you have complete control over the markup, you do actually have to exert control over your markup. Um, so for, for pages, um, you want to extend the, the pages page template. It gives you a lot of sensible defaults, and then you override the bits that you don't, that, that you need to have change. So you also want to load up the mezzanine tags uh, tag library that I'll, I'll talk about in a sec. Um, this is using the the default templates. Uh, the base template uh, gives you a whole, is a bootstrappy template, gives you a bunch of different panels and blocks that you can stuff content into. Um, if you don't like bootstrap, or if you don't want, don't like the way it uses bootstrap, again, you can just override that template. You can set it up however you want. So you having, so I'm gonna put in the right, right hand panel, I'm gonna um, put in a, an image, I'm gonna take that employee image uh, photo field and I'm going to make it a thumbnail because I don't want someone to come in and upload a two megabyte PNG file that's thousands upon thousands of pixels wide. And I'm just going to thumbnail it down. Um, and then I'm going to, in the, in the main block, I'm just going to put the content there. I'm going to pass it through rich text filters first. You can define a f you know, functions that will pre process the content. So, for example, on my personal blog, I've got a filter that I wrote that uh, will. Use beautiful soup to inspect the content field of a of a, of a block for looking for pre or code tags that uh, have a class um, highlight, and then it runs them through the highlighter on the server, and then so, so you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to do that client side. It's all I'm, I'm having that done on the server, and then mark it as safe so that you don't uh, you know, so you tell it that you are expecting there to be tags in this code. Uh, the editable section there as well uh, is, is what gives you the little edit tag. It's a mezzanine, um, a mezzanine uh, template tag there. Page tries to do something clever uh, with the templating in that it will try and guess which template it should use. Note that I never explicitly told in the admin or in the model which template I want it. To, to load up that, that that object with, so it goes through and it looks down. It will it will take the slug, which was like the it's like the title. It's a thing it derives from the title of the page that it uses in the URL. So it starts pages, page slug, pages. In, in that case, employee. 
then, then it starts to recurse down and it'll look, look up, the, up the page tree where it happens to find that page object and it will start looking back up. So if you've got, um, you know, a, about us directors, the C, you know, the big boss, it will look, it will look along that um, path to try and find a template that it can use. And then if you can't, it just gives up and uses pages page, which is for the most part blank. Uh, Django debug toolbar makes it really easy to debug these things. That's why I had it installed on the on the example. Really quickly, object-based um, uh, types. When you expect to have a whole bunch of things, uh, for example, pages of publications that I was talking about before, those were an object, because you don't expect someone to drill down through a menu to find one of 10,000 publications. You're expecting them to search, or you're expecting them to hit uh, an index page, and then find their way from there. So you just, um, you instead of using a, a subclassing page, you subclass displayable, and then you have to define your own view logic. Um, models looks an awful lot like, again, just the standard model, uh, except you have to define a get absolute URL method. That's what uh, Mezzanine uses to uh, for the uh, view on site links in the admin, it, is it uses that. The admin, um, this is one of the things I don't like. The overriding the field set order thing is really nasty. It's a bit of a clutch. Um, I think there are suggestions on the mailing list about better ways of doing this that might end up getting implemented in later versions of Mezzanine, but at the moment it's, it's a bit gross. Um, and then the view is a, is a standard Django template view. Um, the the only thing that's really different here is if you note uh, where I've got context widget equals and then looking up, uh, trying to find a widget out of the um, view quags, I'm using dot published for user self dot request dot user. Uh, mezzanine, the, the base mezzanine displayable class has a few fields that control visibility. So you have a uh, is viewable by staff only field, you know, it requires login field. You have a when you ex want it to appear on the site, when you want it to expire off the site, and whether it's a draft or not. The dot published uses those fields and then looks up and says, right, for the request user, are they staff? If, if, if not, and it's not a published thing, we're gonna bail out. No, you can't see that. Um, if you are staff, then yeah, we'll let you view it. If you're not staff, but it is published, then yeah, sure, you can have a look at this as well. So that's, uh, instead of using dot objects, you use dot published. Oh, um, the other thing was that uh, editable object, if you set, that's what uh, it's using for the editable interface um, with the, yeah, cool, thanks. Uh, Cool, and then the template looks pretty much the same as it was with a page. So, comparison. Not gonna try and compare this to Wagtail. I haven't had any chance to actually look at Wagtail. So, I'm probably gonna be, so I'm gonna be talking about Drupal a little bit. That's what I've had most exposure to. If you can minimize your exposure to Drupal, please do. It's like the plague, you just, you just don't wanna leave them. Um, Structure is not content. Config is not content. The settings for your site do not live in a database. They should not live in the database. This is a thing Drupal does that just drives me mad. Try taking a Drupal site that has been on UAT and the customers have been, have been at it and have fiddled her out and added stuff and deleted stuff and then you go in and you set up a new feature and then you want it to exist on the production system. How do you know, you, you can't, the answer is you can't. You can't know that when you copy that database across, all you're getting is the settings changes. Because the settings changes and the content live in the same database. And even in some cases in the same table in the same database. It's maddening. Mezzanine enforces a really strong separation between the, the configuration of your site, which is Python, it lives in your, it lives in your version control system, you can test it, you can run it through your continuous integration infrastructure, um, and the content, which is in, in a database, in, you know, and that 
they are separate. They never the two shall meet. You can you can take a database dump and a git tag of a mezzanine site and deploy it to 50 servers, and you can be sure that they will always have exactly the same configuration and content and structure. You can't do that with Drupal. You can't always do that with WordPress. This is one of the really great benefits we see with Mezzanine. You have no risk of accidentally polluting a prod site with test data. How many times have you gone onto a website, someone's blog, you know, and seen a bunch of pages of Lauren Ipsum because someone's taken a UAT dump, loaded it up into production? You can have control over your markup. If you want your mezzanine blog to be Haiku compliant, you can do that. That is a thing that is technically possible. I wouldn't recommend it, but you know, if you, if you want to do that, you can. It gives you control over your markup. It uses the Django templating system. It doesn't enforce a structure. The downside of this is that it doesn't enforce a structure. You have to kind of know how you want your markup to, to, to be laid out. Uh, the templates, the default template does su suggest a sensible approach, but you, again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Um, it's really easy to drop mezzanine onto an existing Django site. If you've got a site that's got a few static pages that you've coded up in templates, it's about three hours work to make them a dynamic, ver uh, you know, editable, edible, editable things on your site. The template tweaking is the hardest part. The, the actual Django side of things is really straightforward. Mezzanine, the things that Mezzanine don't, doesn't quite do well. Uh, versioned content. This is a bit of a pain point, personally. Um, there is no support in Core Mezzanine for having a page where you can edit it and then roll back changes. Um, there isn't a generic solution either that I found. I'm hoping, really hoping someone's going to come up to me afterwards and tell me that I just haven't been Googling right. But as far as I'm, I know, there's nothing that exists in Mezzanine. Um, and it is something that Drupal and WordPress support out of the box. Um, the documentation. It, Mezzanine suffers the curse of a moderately successful open source project. The documentation is sparse, um, I think is probably the right way of putting it. It's there, and it will help you sometimes. A lot of the time, it is easier to just go look at the source code. Um, you can just go look at the source code, though. It is really nicely well written, clean. Um, yeah. Um, don't use mezzanine with an organization that has a two week turnaround for getting approval to deploy new code onto production. Because your config is your code, you're going to be changing your code a lot. Mm -hmm. So if it takes you two weeks to get approval to put a new version on the prod servers, you're going to have a bad time. Maybe Drupal might be more appropriate. Um, in summary, Mezzanine, it's pretty much just Django, but easier if you're running a content management system. It's really quick to get started. It separates your structure from your code. It's got a really strong ecosystem because of being able to borrow from Django's ecosystem. But there also are a lot of projects that are Mezzanine specific that make life easier for Mezzanine sites. You've got the pages, the objects. I'm about to get pulled off. Um, you can use it to your with your existing Django app really easily. Please come and help us write some documentation. We are trying. <laughs> We're getting there. It's getting better. Those are the URLs. I'm Will Hughes. Questions? <laughs> Thank you very much, Will. I um, hope oh, that's right. Yeah, so please don't store your configuration in the database. <laughs> Minify, or you're not making friends. Um, questions? Just a quick one, because lightning talk is just about to come up. Woo, comprehensive talk then. Yeah. If you people want to talk to me off offline, I'll be hanging around outside. Um, yeah. Cool. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs>